Good morning everyone, Sonia here, and welcome back to OPC Kids Ministry. Now unfortunately, this is going to be our last lesson for the summer. But for our last lesson, I thought we'd try something a little different. Maybe you have a little fun with it. We're going to recap the stories that we learned in our Armor of God series by playing a little game that we like to call, Don't Squeeze My Chicken! Alright, I got my mic. Now, for those of you who are new, I will ask a question and you will wait until I read all the possible answers before you squeeze your chicken. Now remember to listen to all the choices before you answer or you're going to be disqualified. Okay, are you ready? Let's play Don't Squeeze My Chicken. Alright, our first question is, what did Peter and his friends do to do after the angel of the Lord came at night and freed them from jail? Did they A, thank the angel of the Lord with gifts? B, they left jail and talked about Jesus even more? C, they talked about how overcrowded the jail is? Or D, they ran as fast as they could? All right, what's the answer? B, they left jail and talked about Jesus even more. In Acts 5, 22 to 25, we read, but when the temple guards went to the jail, the men were gone. So they returned to the council and reported. The jail was securely locked with the guards standing outside. But when we opened the gates, no one was there. And when the captain of the temple guard and the leading priests heard this, they were perplexed, wondering where it would all end. Then someone arrived with startling news. The men you put in jail are standing in the temple, teaching the people. All right, let's go to our next question. When the high council decided to kill Peter and his friends, which Pharisee rescued them from being killed? Was it A, Gamaliel, B, Nicodemus, C, Joseph of Arimathea, or D, the Wizard of Oz? All right, let's see if you got the right answer. A, Gamaliel. But one member of Pharisee named Gamaliel who was an expert in religious law and respected by the people, stood up and ordered the men to be sent outside the council chamber for a while. Then he said to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care of what you are planning to do to these men. My advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing these things merely on their own, it'll all be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. And that you find in Acts 5, 34 to 35, and also in verses 38 to 39. Okay, next question, guys. Why wasn't Jesus too impressed with the leaders of religious law and the Pharisees? A, they didn't go to church on Sundays. B, they didn't wear their Sunday vest. C, they forgot about kids' ministry. Or D, they don't practice what they teach. See if you guys got the right answer. D, they don't practice what they teach. Matthew 23, verses 3 to 7, we read, For they don't practice what they teach. They crush people with their unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burden. Everything they do is for show. On their arms, they wear extra-wide prayer boxes with scripture verses inside, and they wear robes with extra-long tassels, and they love to sit at the head table at banquets and in the seats of honors, honor in the synagogues. They love to receive respectful greetings as they walk in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi. Okay, next question. Judas greets Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane with a... A... Fist bump, B, handshake, C, kiss, or D, high five. All right, let's see what it is. C, a kiss. Luke 22 to 47 to 48, we read. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the 12 disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Okay, how are you guys doing so far? Pretty good? Okay, next question. What did Jesus do when Peter cut off the high priest's slave right ear? 
A. Did he heal the slave? B. Ran away to safety? C. Disciplined Peter? Or D. Told Peter to cut off the left as well? All right, let's see what we answered here. A. He healed the slave. Luke 22, 49 to 52. When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. And one of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Here's your next question. How many days did the rain fall after Noah, his family, and the animals got on the boat? Was it A, 50 days and 50 nights? B, about a month? C, 40 days and 40 nights? Or D, I don't know, but I bet it felt like forever. All right, let's see what the answer is. C, 40 days and 40 nights. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. The rain continued to fall for 40 days and for 40 nights. And we read that in Genesis 7, 11 to 12. Next question. What does God do to Noah after the flood? Does he A, gives him a towel, B, gives him food to eat, C, schools him for a leak he found on the boat, or D, blesses him? Let's see what the answer is. D, he blesses him. And God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. All the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. And you find that one in Genesis 9, verses 1 to 3. All right, next question. What were the other prisoners doing when Paul and Silas began praying and singing hymns to God? Were they A, listening, B, harmonizing with them, C, asking the guards to make it stop, or D, covering their ears? Let's see what the answer is. A, they were listening. In Acts 16, 22 to 25, a mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten, and then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, so the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and sing singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Next question. After the earthquake and after the jailer called for the lights, what did the jailer ask Paul and Silas? A, why are you still here? B, can I sing with you? C, are you both all right? Or D, how can I be saved? All right, here's the answer. D, how can I be saved? Acts 16, 29 to 32, we read, the jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, along with everyone in your household. And they will share the word of the Lord with him and will with all who lived in his household. Okay, next question. What did Jesus use to fight temptation in the wilderness? Was it A, willpower, B, scripture, C, exercise, or D, prayer? All right, the answer is B, scripture. So this comes from Luke 4, verses 4, 8, and 12. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone. Jesus replied, the scriptures say, you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. All right, here is our final question for today. What does the armor of God consist of? 
A, the belt of truth and the body armor of righteousness. B, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. C, shoes of peace and the shield of faith. Or D, all of the above. The answer, D, all of the above. Ephesians 6, 13 to 18, we read, Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm, standing your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition of all of these, hold up your shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. All right, how'd you guys do? I'm sure you guys all did great. Let's wrap this up in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the beautiful weather and for our health. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to wrap your loving arms around us and keep us safe. We ask you that you continue to protect all the frontline workers and those who work with the public from COVID. Put your healing hand on those who are affected by the virus and give wisdom to those who are looking for a cure, treatment, or vaccine. We ask you that you stay close to us to give us peace when we are scared and give us rest when we are too busy. Thank you, Lord, for being our friends. In Jesus' name we pray and all the children say, Amen. I hope you guys have enjoyed these lessons as much as I have enjoyed filming them. Keep tuning in to our OPC live stream services throughout the summer. Have a great summer, and I'll see you in September. Ciao.